Hello everyone, as a long time Fujifilm camera user, I've come across many people who complain about video quality issues like artifacts, bending, ghosting and softness. But fear not, as I'm here to help you avoid these problems by sharing a couple of settings, tweaks that can make a big difference on your Fujifilm X-T5. In this video, I'll keep things simple and straightforward. If you're new to my channel, my name is Andrei Dima and I'm a professional video maker and travel photographer who loves using Fujifilm gear. If you want to see more Fujifilm content, make sure to subscribe and check out my other videos. Shooting video at 100 megabits per second on Fujifilm X-T5 cameras is generally not enough data for 10-bit 422 color sampling. Most Fujifilm cameras that support 10-bit 422 recording require a higher bitrate to capture all of the color information and in detail in the image. For example, the Fujifilm X-T3 and X-T4 cameras support 10-bit 422 recording, but the minimum bitrate required to achieve this level of quality is 200 megabits per second. It's important to note that the actual amount of data required for 10-bit 422 recording can vary depending on factors such as resolution, frame rate and the complexity of the scene being recorded. However, in general, a higher bitrate is needed to capture the increased color and detail information of 10-bit 422 compared to standard 8-bit 420 recording. So, if you are looking to shoot 10-bit 422 on a Fujifilm X-T5 camera, it's important to use higher bit rates like 200 megabits per second to ensure that you have enough data to capture the desired level of quality. The Fujifilm X-T5's inter-frame noise reduction feature can be a useful tool for videographers looking to reduce noise at high ISO levels for still subjects. When used correctly, this feature can help you get cleaner footage in challenging lighting conditions. However, it's important to keep in mind that this feature may cause unwanted ghosting effects if used when filming moving subjects or performing camera movements like panning or tilting. To avoid these issues, it's best to turn off the feature when shooting subjects in motion. The interframe noise reduction feature is most effective when shooting in 4K up to 30p and at high ISO levels like 12800. At lower ISO levels like 1600, the difference in noise reduction may not be as noticeable. Additionally, it's worth noting that this feature is not compatible with 4K 60p or 1080p. Fujifilm claims that the interframe noise reduction feature can reduce noise by up to two stops at ISO 12800, which can make a significant difference in the final image quality. In summary, the interframe noise reduction feature is a useful tool to have in your arsenal when shooting in challenging lighting conditions with still subjects. Just be sure to turn it off when shooting moving subjects or performing camera movements when it comes to getting the best possible footage out of your Fujifilm camera, paying attention to the noise reduction option is key. While it may seem straightforward, the default setting of zero can be a bit misleading. In reality, it's not necessarily no noise reduction, but rather what Fujifilm considers acceptable. If you're looking to disable in-camera noise reduction completely and get sharper, crisper shots, you'll need to set the option to minus 4. That being said, it's important to remember that no in-camera noise reduction isn't always the best choice for optimal image quality. Depending on the lighting conditions and other factors, a certain amount of noise reduction may be necessary to achieve the perfect shot. This is where experimentation comes in taking the time to try out different settings and find the right balance between noise reduction and sharpness can make a huge difference in the final product. It's also worth noting the noise reduction in post-processing can be even more effective than in-camera noise reduction. If you have the ability to denoise your footage after the fact, you may want to try setting the noise reduction option to minus 4 to get the best results. 
If you don't have the possibility to denoise in post, try using minus 3 or minus 2 if you need some noise reduction. Additionally, if the sharpness is set to 0 or more, it can accentuate any noise or artifacts in the video, making them more noticeable and distracting. This is especially true in low light situations where the camera may already be struggling to capture clean footage. To avoid these issues, I recommend to keep the sharpness setting at a moderate level when shooting video on the Fujifilm X-T5. It's also worth noting that sharpness can be adjusted in post-production. Applying peripheral light correction to video footage on Fujifilm X-T5 cameras should not cause any significant damage to the footage or add noticeable artifacts, but it may sometimes create bending, so if you noticed bending in your footage, this may be the problem. The correction is applied during post-processing and works by brightening up the darker areas of the frame to create a more even exposure. This is generally a non-destructive process that doesn't alter the original video data. However, it's possible that in extreme cases, applying a strong correction to heavily vignetted footage could result in some loss of detail or color accuracy in the affected areas. So, it's always a good idea to test out the feature on your specific camera and lens combination to see how it performs before relying on it in a professional setting. In general though, using peripheral light correction on Fujifilm X-T5 is a safe and effective way to correct for vignetting in both video and stills. Long GOP versus All Intra The main difference between Long GOP and All Intra video formats is that Long GOP uses a combination of previously encoded frames to compress the video while all intra encodes each frame individually. Long GOP creates smaller file sizes but sacrifices some image quality and editing flexibility. When recording motion, long GOP compression can create motion artifacts such as blocky or blurry images because it relies on reference frames to create new frames. This can be especially noticeable in high motion scenes. On the other hand, all intra compression encodes each frame individually, which can provide better image quality and reduce motion artifacts. This makes it a better choice for recording high motion scenes or capturing fast moving objects. In summary, when recording motion, all intra compression can provide better image quality and reduce motion artifacts, but it also requires higher bit rates and larger file sizes than long GOP. The choice between the two will depend on the specific needs of the recording. Now, with all this info at your disposal, you can identify the problems you were having with your footage or they will help you get the most out of your work. If this video was helpful, subscribe, like and use the links in the description. See you next time.